Good evening. I am Victor Damon of the Damon Saloon. Come in, come in, and don't forget to fill out one of the name tags I've placed for you. Ah, but you're the same as you always were, aren't you? It's a confuddling thing, the separation between worlds. Four friends enter my saloon, the same as they have each and every year before. But while the soul is the same, the avatar changes. And with a new cast of characters on this auditory stage comes the need for a similarly novel approach. But how can I help my dear new friends when I don't know them myself? For by the time they open this door, I ought to understand them completely. You wake up. It's both dark and light outside, which is a very bullshit descriptor. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what? This is worse than the Diamond Pyramid. What? The Diamond Pyramid of Light. What? The very Kingdom Hearts descriptor. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's mostly dark outside, but there is a uh, there are a few lights around you, a few artificial lights. The main light that you see is reflecting off of this giant silver sphere, the size of like uh, probably a small skyscraper. And this giant silver sphere has a series of small pyramids covering its surface. (laughs) All right. And that's what happens. You all wake up. You don't know where you are or how you got here. I don't know why, but I think this probably has something to do with Sparky. Sparky's still asleep. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she's doing like the Anna sleep, the like head on the arm. Like it looks so uncomfortable, but she is clearly very happy. Sparky Malarkey, what did you do? What? what? Oh, so the detective here agrees with my assessment. I think you, I mean, I guess maybe not because you're just waking up, but maybe this is a ploy to pretend. What? Pretend, what are you doing here? What are you doing? What What are we doing here? That is a question that we want to answer. What? What? Hilda just opens her eyes, sits bolt upright, and is like, Booker? Booker, where are you? Is Booker here or is Booker not here? Booker's not here. You don't see Booker, but you do see three Mon (laughs) arguing with each other. (laughs) The first is a bat with rotating magnifying glasses of different sizes and strengths in front of its eyes. This is the skeptical. You also recognize a buff tardigrade made out of Australian baloke. Baloke? Uh, just the strongest one. With great vines around its body. It has a little hole, so the little hole in the front of a tardigrade's face is instead a big flashing eye, which in a video game would scream, I am the weak point. Uh, this is the tardigrade. And then finally, you just see Toucan. Oh god. You see, you see, you see Toucan the King Pecker, except he's not making the sounds that Toucan normally makes and instead sounds like an elderly skeleton. Is Hilda the first one that notices? It feels appropriate that Hilda would be the first one to like wake up and be like, wait a second. Like we're all just too busy quabbling. <laughs> exactly. Like Sparky, I hear you somewhere. I like the idea of us all blaming each other, but not looking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, just, like, laying there still. Sparky's still, her eyes are barely open. Hilda's going to stand up, question mark. (laughs) Uh, Hilda, you go to stand up, and you just flop upwards from your side. Oh, dear. Like, if you try to move your legs, you can feel them move a little bit, but it's very hard for a translucent pale blue mouse that's a (laughs) balloon animal to uh, move. Oh, dear. Yeah, you uh, you get up on your side, uh, and I don't know if anyone else notices, but it's just this little, like, balloon mouse that's a pale blue uh, color, and it just flops up from its side onto its feet. What? Uh, I have a, 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 a nature question that may open a lot of can of worms, and that is, uh, you know, Tukan is a bird, yeah. and, like, do necromonts eat other necromonts? Oh, like- no! Oh, no! So, okay, well, oh, he did try to eat the necromouse. They don't have to. 
But Booker canonically eats necro snails. Yeah. Booker eats a lot of things. And Toucan canonically eats necro mice. Because, yeah. like, I think, like, I, like instinctively, like, he might try to go and peck the thing that's moving without thinking. Uh, I need both of you to roll me a d10. <laughs> you and your animorphs. Just one, okay. Just one, just one d10. All right. Heart of the cards, guide me. I rolled a four. Nine motherfuckers. <laughs> how do how do you so uh, instinctively this bird lunges at you, Hilda? How do you get out of the way? I tumble end over end like a little tumbleweed blowing in the wind. <laughs> I'm just a little balloon mouse. Oh bless! But I'm also very fast because I assume I'm also a blue mouse of the speed. Oh my! <laughs> I don't think that was Emily's intent, but I fucking love it. So we're going with it. It's too late. You're moving your feet. You're moving, moving your feet. Because I should note that each of you designed these for the other. I had like some role in some of them, but I did not choose these. But Hilda will just scream a little bit like, ah! You hear that, but it's very high pitched, like it's coming out of helium. Oh! Like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh dear. 100% what it sounds like. Uh, I think that's when KK will realize there's something <laughs> off here. Like, why did I? Why did I peck Hilda? Why did I try to eat a balloon? <laughs> why am I hungry? <laughs> He's like, ah, ah, cheat. What he say? So what? What? What is? I feel like I'm. I mean, I'm usually tall, but I feel like I am way taller than I usually am. Just like moving his head side by side. Mister KK, is that you? <laughs> Irene pats two of her many tiny legs together. <laughs> Something is wrong. Sparky just Sparky's just blinking because she's the, I'm the skeptical, right? I want to be that one. Yeah. After a couple of seconds of blinking, somehow just naturally, organically, a couple of the glasses like flip down in front of your eyes. Thank God. <laughs> oh, this is this is new. This is new. Okay. Oh, all of this is new. <laughs> so what, what, Hilda, what did you do? <laughs> I'm just alone. Each of you blaming someone else. <laughs> Why did I do anything? What is this, 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 um, Get yeah, out me. of my dreams again. Again? I mean, I would think that the dream is the most logical explanation, but I don't really dream. No, but I do. That's... Wait, yeah, what do you mean again? You're in my dream. What do you mean again? I don't know if any of you recognize what Irene means by the dream before the screen goes on, but regardless, eventually, at some point, you piece together that, wait, there was that time about this time a year ago on Halloween when, yeah, you went to a weird place and Maybelline was there and Yunuin was there and Lionel was there. Wow. And there was also the man on the screen. The globe in front of you lights up like a TV monitor. And on it, you hear some like, you know, the tapping of the mic is like someone's trying to get something together. And you eventually see a vampire dressed in a bartender's garb, holding in front of him a baseball bat with a drawing <laughs> of his face on it. Oh my god. Googly eyes, a uh, formal suit, and circles on his cheeks. God bless. And the man behind the bat, while moving his uh, the little bat around, says, Good evening, my friends. It is I, Victor Damon of the Damon Saloon, and I want to play a game. Now, I imagine you all might be wondering how you are here. Well, I can't really tell you how. Something, something, Halloween magic is how. Boo! But why? Oh, I can tell you why. So, last Halloween, Halloween. 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 I forgot how you call it. Okay. Last year, I made the grievous error of mistaking you for the other quest friends. And for that, I sincerely apologize. You're all just so similar, you know? Except for the skeleton. <laughs> I still don't know how I messed up that one. What are you talking about? Anywho, I thought we ought to get to know each other better. So I brought you here and put you in forms representative to your world. 
both to put you at ease and, uh, you know, show you how much I've been paying attention. I'm sorry, put us at ease? You thought this was going to put us at ease? DK has been trying to peck at the at the globe. <laughs> like, I don't know why I just keep doing this. Ah! As you're speaking, it goes, Are you saying something to me? I can't hear you. This is all pre-recorded, which is why I'm going to keep playing this pre-recorded message, saying that the messages are pre-recorded every five minutes. Balls! With that, I proudly present Day Monopoly! Day Monopoly! It's a board game, mini game, a fusion that is completely original to uh, your world, at least. I hate games. <laughs> you see, to get to my saloon where the real party is, you need the magic of stars. I hate parties. To get these stars, you're each going to take turns rolling dice and walking across spaces and playing mini games, which will collect star points. At the end of five turns, whoever is in first place will light the way to the saloon, get first dibs on the hors d'oeuvres, and also, you know, get turned back into their regular form and get to go home. I mean, I know this is pointless since you can't hear us, but does only one person get to leave this place if we win? Yeah, uh, <laughs> so I've got a series of games for you. Little get-to-know-you games. I'll be hanging out here in my own <laughs> necroman form. And he points in front of him the uh, little bat with the googly eyes, which is a, a vampire bat. Oh my oh god. No. Oh, oh my, my god. god. That's that's not a real necromon, but that is what his philosophy was. I hate it. He made a vampire bat. God damn it, Kyle. Incredible. I'm so happy for him. But since this is all you know pre-recorded, I have Ben there to walk you through the details. Say hi, Ben. And as he says that in the lights, um, I'm going to say the lights, like music starts playing, lights start shining. You can see that all around you, there are these octagonal board spaces of differing colors light up from the ground. And by some of them, you see a little goblin with a white poet's cap that has red polka dots on it. Oh, my God. And the goblin just kind of sheepishly waves his hand and says, oh, hi there, everybody. Welcome to the game. Welcome to the game. And he starts doing this little tip tap dance. Sorry, I just I, I like dancing a lot. How are you guys doing today? You know, I've been better, but thank you for asking. Can you answer the question of if only one person gets to leave if we win? I think we just want to go home. So I'm assuming you also want the answer to that question. So your two questions That's are kind of, kind of what questions were. Yes. So, so, so yeah, the, the two questions are. Can I answer the question? Can I tell you? And the other question is, what's the answer? Is there only one person? Uh, so according to Big Boss Man's rules, I can tell you that the answer to one of them is yes, and the answer to one of them is no. Uh... Anyways, we're going to have five turns of uh, some, some Day Monopoly fun. What if we didn't? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then after those turns, you know, we're, we'll have a little party at the saloon. So any other questions for me? I'm Ben. Okay, but like, actually, you didn't answer my associate's question, which is, so one of us gets to leave in this weird dream that's happening? When I wake up, you will all be gone. So, <laughs> All right, well, that's a bit, that's a bit. Oh, are you the cosmic dreamer? Am I the what? The, the world weaver. Are you, Irene? It's my dream. You're not very helpful for us, are you, Ben? <laughs> well, I, uh... I hope to pick that. He gets really worried when he says that starts ending. <laughs> we hope to pick that up. Please give me a good review for the big boss, man. Do you got Yelp? Yelp? Yeah. Oh, I sure hope not. <laughs> okay. We're okay, not that I kind. Mean. We're, it's not that kind of Halloween okay, production. Mentioned. Nothing painful. All right. Oh, I meant. Okay. So the way that this game is going to work is there are going to be five turns. During each of those turns, you're going to roll one of these bad boys and he lifts his hand up and above him is a six-sided dice 
that displays 10 numbers. Oh my God. And I will not explain how that works. I love it so much. I hate it. You're gonna move around the board. You're gonna do some get to know your mini games, you know, get to know yourself so that, you know, big boss man gets to know you. Uh, and then uh, you'll collect some star points. And then at the end of the game, I can guarantee for sure that one of you is gonna make it home. All right. So you probably want to win. It seems a little cutthroat for a friendship time, but you know, that's what Big Boss Man wants, so. What if none of us win? Well, one of you is gonna win. But what if everyone gets zero star points at the end? I have to make a call. <laughs> Just hit the dice while I'm gone. And he pulls out a scroll and pulls it up into his ear and walks away. And as he walks away, you can see that each of you has a uh, six sided die above you. And there's a little thing uh, beneath it that just says, hit me. Hit. Actually, no, it, it, whis it whispers, hit me, <laughs> hit me. I hate that I hadn't thought about how Mario Party has six sided die and then it's a 10 number and now I would be able to. I'm never going to see it. I'm hit never going to see it a different way. I want to be punched and a rabble on the ground. Kike will be like, oh, I, I refuse to, but then because he still has very powerful <laughs> instincts as this token, as he says that, he's going to immediately launch and try and pick it. I fucking love it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Give me give me the roll for your uh, dice. Seven. 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 All right. You got a seven. What about everyone else? Okay. Sparky does a cute little bat flutter up to the die that's floating above her head. She's still getting used to her bat wings, but she gets there and she gives it a mighty slap and rolls it. Nine! Okay. Hilda's gonna sigh and then squeak, 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 <laughs> as my, my balloon legs squeak every time I move. <laughs> I love it. Love his balloon mouth. And then just like, meh, poke it with my nose. It reacts as if you hit it with all of your strength, even though it was just a little love tap. And I got an eight. Okay, Irene. I feel like Irene went to stomp her foot, but she has so many feet that she just <laughs> smacks it. Now, here's a question. Is this, like, the first time Irene has ever, like, had zero pains whatsoever? Like, oh. is this Necromon body more powerful than Irene's normal body? How much pain do tardigrades feel? I mean, they like can dry up and survive out of nothing. Yeah, I feel like they're pretty invincible. Uh, yeah, so let's say you're invincible, but you do feel a lot of some kind of pain. Oh no. Great. That's not what I wanted. I wanted the opposite <laughs> of this. Thanks, Tom. All right, what do you get, Irene? Eight. Oh, we're so close in numbers. Yeah. Tom got a seven and Ari got a six. No, I got an eight. No, no, I got a seven. Oh, okay. And Hallie got a nine. Mm -hmm. So here's where we get to an interesting thing. So it's going to be Hallie first for sure. And then Ari is going to be fourth. Now, when it comes for mechanics, because we're doing a homebrew game called It's Your Birthday, But It's My Party, based on something Hallie once yelled during Mario Party. She did it to me. I was Peach on the Peach birthday cake, and she was Mario. And I was like, I'm going to win because it's my birthday. And she was like, it may be your birthday, but it is my party. And she won. <laughs> and then I won. And then also, it's almost my birthday because it was yesterday. So it's both those things as we record. It's true. It's your birthday, but it's Victor. Damon's party. <laughs> it's a bullshit system, is the short version of the story. So, keeping that in mind, who do you think would hit the dice better between the two of them? A balloon or <laughs> a wooden tardigrade? I'm gonna go with the tree. I think the wooden tardigrade is the answer. Based yeah, on Tom's yeah. actual description of the light nose boop. Yeah, the like boop. All right, so in that case, our order is going to be Sparky, Irene, Hilda, and Kike. And Sparky, as you all hit it and they all go up, it's like, thank you for hitting me. <laughs> Three of you feel like these creepy tendrils from the ground reach up and grab your legs. No. Except for Sparky, who has another dice up here above her, and she goes, hit me. Oh, no. I just did that again. I'm a different one. All right, all right. Wait, but before you do that. Oh, okay. You could use an item. Do you wanna? 
Do I have items? You sure do. <laughs> so in this game, each of you gets items. Essentially, it's like items in Mario Party. They're going to change your dice roll. Uh, Sparky, your item is a warp block. What? What the warp block does is automatically places you on the space of a random person. So it randomly chooses one of the other people and you go to the space they were at last. That seems like a really useful thing to use on the first card. Yeah, so the block is gonna say, oh, fiddlesticks, you went first. So you can't warp. <laughs> that means all you can do is hit me, hit me, hit me. I <laughs> as hard as I can with my little fat wings. I'm getting better and better each time. You're gonna roll a 1d10 uh, where you land bases on how you roll. Okay. The majority of spaces are one through 10. However, there are some spaces you can only get on using an item like a mushroom or a golden pipe. Oh, okay. But you can't use an item, so right now all you can do is roll. Yeah, all I can do is go, and uh, I got a 10. You're killing it. I am killing it. It's your birthday and it's your party. It's your birthday and it's my birthday and it's my party. You feel ghostly winds pick you up. Uh, a a, a, a jack-o'-lantern. Bump, bump, bump. Appears like Pac-Man. Slams you in it and moves you forward <sighs> 10 spaces on top of an exclamation point. And when you get on there, you hear Victor Damon reappears on the screen. And he says, Do you believe in faith? No. These three big gears do. We don't. Give them a spin and figure out how your star points and items will be rearranged. But do keep your distance. You wouldn't know this, but gears can be awfully dangerous. No, why? Like, why? Three giant gears appear in front of you, Sparky. God, why? Oh my God. And as they do, you see Ben, who's just lifting them up like Atlas holding the world, but a little goblin saying, Christ. oh, sorry, I forgot to give you all your five starting star points. And light, sheer motes of light go into your little necromon forms. God. Oh, so we start with five star points? You all start with five star points, because otherwise chance time would mean fucking nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's chance time. Essentially what happens is you're going to roll three times. The first one is going to choose the first person. The second roll will choose what happens, and the third one will choose what happens from there. So, Sparky. Yeah. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is roll a 1d4. We're going to go in order of the people, uh, in order of like the... Turn order. Yeah, turn order. So one is you, two is Emily, three is Tom, four is Ari. Okay. Two. Two. So Irene and uh, Irene, you get picked up and thrown in the middle of the gear, like the little circle area. Oh, God. <laughs> it just starts spinning around and around and around. Oh, oh God. Sparky, Malarkey, what are you doing? I have no idea, but it sure is fun. D10, five. Uh, exchanges all star points with. Exchanges all star. Well, this means nothing. <laughs> Which this means, means nothing. nothing. All right, roll me a 1d3 for the other person. So Irene had to go in the gear, <laughs> but she doesn't even get anything. And Sparky didn't have to do it. Three. Three? Yeah. So <laughs> Kike, two yeah. cannons up in the other gear, and they just spin around and around and around and around. Ah! As you're spinning, the five motes of light go out, go through the gears around it, and then emerge into the other person. And then it stops. And Ben uh, drops it. <sighs> oh, I feel like that didn't actually do anything. Ben, this game is a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. I have no idea what happened. I feel like it did something. His feathers are all poofed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. Now stay right there. And as he does that, the pumpkin that was moving you just chomps up from the ground and holds yeah. you in place. And the next person is you, Irene. The dice block just rolls up. What happened? What, what happened? happened? A one. Nice. You see the little bat face, but it looks horrifying. It looks like oh, no. the, the thing from Saw, but it's like <laughs> on the space. It's about time. And Ben just looks at you. All right, step forward. I don't think I want to. <laughs> With that, this woo, and a wind pushes you a space forward. As Victor says, A demon space. 
How wonderful! For me, <laughs> not for you. It's very bad for you. And Irene, everyone else sees as you're like thrust into the ground. You're like thrown down to the ground into this like dark pit where uh, another dice appears in front of you. This one smoking and it goes, hit me, hit me hard. <laughs> oh God. I know you want to. This is Steve Winchester. <laughs> but if I didn't, well, then I'm going to have to hit you there, little lady. <laughs> and it flies into you, bonks right on the weak point, and then hits the ground. And no. I need you out of character to roll me a 1d10. Oh, my God. This is not a good dream. Eight. Eight. That was a revolution. That was a revolution. Yes. That was a revolution. Yeah. <laughs> that was a revolution. <laughs> I, I love how I don't think this, like these two things have not changed anything. Nothing. Nothing at all. All of you feel as the star points are forcefully wrested from your body and placed in each other. This is such a good game. And Ben just shrugs her shoulders as Irene is pulled back up from the shadows. <laughs> Actually, no, Irene's going to stay in the shadows until her next turn. All right, so I don't want to tell you guys how to play, but I would be appreciated if one of you, there's lots of like blue and red spaces here. They're going to kind of mix up the game a little bit. So if you could land on those, that would be really helpful. Wow, you would appreciate it, huh, Ben? Well, I mean, yes, I do want this to be a good, Big Boss Man wants to see what you're like. And I think, well, I think. I hope you suffer. You tell him, Irene, Ben, you're doing great. Oh, uh, okay. He yells down because <laughs> I forgot you're down the pit. So he was yelling yeah. into this void and then he turns over to Hilda and is like, all right, uh, I think it's uh, I think it shows you next. And the little dice is like, hit me. So, um, Ben, do you do you, do you get a lot of breaks working the nightmare board game? Uh, nightmare board game? No, this is the first time he's done the nightmare board game. Oh. He really, you know, he likes to try different things. Uh, I feel like you deserve breaks for this. Yeah. This is like a lot of work. Yeah. Roll me a 1d10 to convince him. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's like 50 50 because he's pretty loyal to Victor, but he is overworked. I got a three. I, well, you know, I, uh, I would like to dance more. <laughs> so like the happy things like this are pretty good. So like, I'll just, uh, you know, I can dance on the job. And he starts tip tapping his feet and boom, like, ah, ba da ba da 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 I got a six. You got a six. Blue space. Whoa. You did it. You are pushed forward onto a blue space. Yay. Simple, boring, reliable, like Kiki, right? <laughs> I'm making a joke about the correct friend, right? He got you, Kiki. I still have no idea what is going on. You got him good, Ben. Hilda, motes of light, five motes of light appear from the ground and go into you, and you now have uh, additional five star points. Oh, this is kind of fun. I actually like this, guys. <laughs> the second Hilda starts winning, yeah, this is pretty good. <laughs> Let's get something. You can feel Irene's frown from the pit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, shit, I forgot about. I forgot to tell you all about your items. Oh yeah. Sparky's is the warp block. Yep. Kike's is the die recycler. Ooh. So you can use this to re-roll a dice. However, you must take the results of the second roll, even if they're worse. Okay. Irene, you have a poison mushroom, which takes anyone's roll and puts it in half, rounding up. You know, I think I'm going to use that on Hilda now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we'll, we'll wait till I send and then Hilda, you have a mushroom. It adds three to your roll. Oh, I got a mushroom. But first, Kike. It's me. You have seen Sparky throw you in some gears. Irene get thrust into the void. Hilda, land on the space and get some points. And then finally, a little hit me, hit me dice appear ahead you. I have, I have kind of no idea what the point of this game is. Uh, it seems like it's putting us in places and moving <laughs> us around and usually end up in the same spot, except for Hilda somehow. <laughs> so I guess I'll hit this, and maybe I can put Sparky in the little gear thing so that you know how that feels. I got a four. A four. A happening space. A happening space. Oh, I want it. I want to see what that is. There are little necromice four in front of you, and you just instinctually bop, 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 bop. 
follow them uh, onto the fourth space, which when you get on it, it lights up. And Victor says, A happening space. What will happen here? I don't know. Nothing, nothing has <laughs> happened in this game. <laughs> <laughs> And Ari, out of character, I want you to roll me a 1d10. Okay. A 1. Oh, no. The fourth place player controls your actions for the next turn. No! <laughs> if you're in fourth, the first place player does so. Well, Ben's going to say, ah, oh, man, that one's rotten luck. None of you on for Wait. No, the uh, the balloon's in first. What? No, I'm not. <laughs> Listen, I, I know I know it's a lot to put extra work on you. You know, you would just tell me about how overworking is bad and, you know, how I shouldn't overwork myself. And now I'm doing the same for you. But uh, it's big boss man's rules, you know. So, uh, yeah, just uh, grab this. And he gives you a remote that is labeled with the toucan on it. And just uh, <laughs> use it. Use it next turn. And that roll you will, uh, Tom, you will be rolling for Ari and deciding what dice she uses. Oh, no. Which means you can uh, exploit items if you want to win. Like, you can force her... To take a potentially a, a worse roll or something like yeah, that. No. Yeah, so, like, if she rolls well, you can force her to use the die recycler in order to re-roll. That makes sense. Yeah. Giant alarms go off as Victor appears on the screen and the big words minigame, minigame, minigame appears. It's time for a minigame! This is an opportunity to gain star points, grab another item, and bear your soul for your good friend, Victor Damon! And before we begin, I just want to make clear that except with the exception of the last one, which for time's sake we might not even do, uh, the players chose each and every one of these. I modified them, but this is their fault. So, the first thing you should do when meeting someone new is ask them some questions about themselves. So I've given Ben a series of get-to-know-you prompts and used my Halloween magic to fill the sky with giant exploding letters. Oh. For each question. No, why? <laughs> this is it. This is it. <laughs> why? No. Meet on the phone. <laughs> the phone on the meat. Grab the letters that make up your answer and put them together. No. Make sure they're in the correct order, though, or the aforementioned explosions will occur. Uh. Although, you have to make pairs out of the letters and you'll figure it out as you go along. It's time for Damon's Gambit! <laughs> no! <laughs> so, how this is going to work is Ben is going to ask you three questions. In universe, what your character is doing is flying around, grabbing the letters. Each of you has been like whisked away to uh, you're basically in Epcot. Yes. In like in front of the big like pond thing. And there are a series of floating letters. So in character, that's what you're doing. You're jumping around to grab the letters out of character. Each of you are going to roll your 10 sided die and you get to answer the question when you roll two in a row. Mm. So if you roll two zeros in a row, then you get to answer. If you roll two sixes in a row, then you get to answer. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the start and the first person I hear yell out an answer will uh, count as the winner for that round. Okay. Is it two in a row or two at the same time? Are we rolling two dice and trying to get doubles or are we rolling one die? Uh, You can roll two dice at once if you want, or you can do them in a row. The idea is still the same. You're basically okay. gunning for doubles. I want to do doubles. That's I want to do doubles. That sounds more fun. Okay. And these are still tens, right? Yeah, these are still tens. Okay. So Ben's going to stand in front of the pool and uh, you, oh, oh. And he's going to step to the side as an explosion happens and says, all right, so I've got three questions for you. A pretty standard stuff. So the first question I have, what is your favorite color? Start rolling. Ugh. Ah! Uh. Green. Oh, Irene uh, says green and the explosions. Da, da, da. Uh, in fact, one of you, I don't know who is holding on to a green letter and explodes as you say that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wait, do, do, we, do we keep or is, is this only like 
Irene says it, and then we are like out of the. Thing. You're out. You're out of it. You're okay, out of it. Okay. So it's gonna be three rounds, and whoever gets the most gets uh, the first place. Uh, okay. And Ben goes, "Oh, like, uh, like plans? Maybe. Oh, well, that's real cool. Yes, obviously, it's cool. Now, question number two. Oh, well, this is a uh, a little bit of a step up, but you can do it. You can do it. And before I do this, I want to note for any multi-word answers. You need to get doubles for each word. Oh, my God. So try to keep it brief. Okay. Because I'm going to start making answers that are progressively longer and longer. Christ. All right. What is your biggest fear? The over- overseers. Oh, that would sound gnarly. What are those? Oh, did I, did I was Hilda's like, oh, wait, you were you were it wasn't rhetorical. You meant that. No, no, I'm I'm, I'm curious. I'm, well, I, the whole point of this is to get to know you guys. Right. Victor's watching. They're scary. They uh, they arrest people. Oh, oh, arrest. That's pretty nasty. Taking people against their will for like no real rehabilitational purposes. Yeah. Yeah. Someone roll me a 1d10. Three. Yeah, he does not realize. Uh, he there was a moment where Ben could have had a realization and it just swooped <laughs> just... right over his toad-like hat. <laughs> nope, no thoughts. Head empty. All right, all right, all right. Final question, and this this is just kind of for the record because you know he had difficulty remembering all of your names. Kyle, this is like stacked against me. If you're asking, what is your full name? I'm like that's just so rude, though. That's just stacked <laughs> against me. Me. Yeah. <laughs> That's just stacked against me. I rolled the doubles, but now I don't have any. Uh. Enrique! Fucking <laughs> <Marky> malarkey! <laughs> Ooh. All right, and the, uh, yeah, I think the, the skeleton guy won, right? Uh, Aurelio Enrique, that's your name? What? What? Uh, yeah! Whoa, sure. what's your okay, name? 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 Enrique what? is my last name. He's not even flying. He's a bird and he's not even flying. I'm a bat. Look at me gone. I'm a, I'm a skeptic. I got, I got the letters. I'm just, what do you mean, Sparky Malarkey? Well, he said Aurelio Enrique first. You no, know, after his full you, name, right? you said, you asked him a question. You said, hey, are you Aurelio Enrique? And he said, no, yes. No, he, he said it, he said it in order, though. No, but that's, but he, but I didn't catch that's, it. he's not following the rule. You're not following the rules, Kike. What do you mean? I got the first one and then I got the second one. Big. I won that one. I thought it was supposed to be your full name. My full name is Sparky Malarkey. Is that a real name? Yeah. But like, what's in a real name? <laughs> it's what you want it to be a re- a, under a real name. I mean, that is a good question. Is that really your name, boss? Yeah. That's what my mama named me. Sparky Malarkey. <laughs> <laughs> on a character I couldn't remember what her real name was. It's Catherine Mueller, right? Yeah, Catherine Mueller. Catherine Mueller, okay. Well, I guess that means Kike wins by default. <laughs> he lied better than Sparky did? This is bullshit. Yeah, and Ben penfully believes him. Ben has no reason to believe his name is an Aurelio Enrique. It is. I just got the, I just, I just didn't get the two last names. Ben doesn't need to know that. All right, perfect. Well, that means that, well, it's a bit of a tie, so this one's going to be tricky. I think what I'll have is I'll, I'll treat you all as second place. Well, um, and he kind of sheepishly looks at you, Sparky. Oh, I'll treat most of you as second place. This is what's wrong with the establishment, Ben. So everyone except for Sparky get five star points. Yay. And then uh, roll me a 1d10 because you all get an item. What? You all get an item? We all get an item? Yeah, second place gets five star points and an item. I got an eight. I got a nine. I got a six. Ari, you get a chomp call. This will uh, switch the star space with a randomly numbered space chosen by rolling 1d10. you basically making it more likely to land on a star space because otherwise you have to roll a 12. Okay. Emily, you got a 7? I got a 9. A 9? Uh, you got a ghost call. You get to go to the ghost space if you want. <laughs> what does the ghost space do again? You steal from others. 
And then, uh, Hilda, you get a custom dice block. Yay. You get to choose a die result between 1 and 10. However, mushrooms don't apply. So it essentially means that you get to choose any of the spaces other than the ghost space or the star space. All right. Uh, I hope you all had fun with that. And with that, I'll, I think we don't. I think I learned a bit about yourself. Uh-huh. One of you likes plants. One of you is afraid of overseers, basically people who are always looking over you and like, you know, kidnapping you and stuff. And as he says that, Victor Damon, you can see the eyes of him are just peering <laughs> through the Epcot globes, staring at you. <laughs> and then he just puts the little bat in front of him and it's replaced with the googly eyes. <laughs> And then your name, sir, is Aurelio Enrique. Yeah, correct. I don't have any other names. <laughs> Perfect. And with that, you're all whisked away by different kinds of ghostly magic. Sparky, you're taken in the pumpkin. Hilda, you are moved along with the wind. Irene, you're thrust back into the earth from whence you came. And Kike, you're given some more tasty necromice <laughs> to distract you back to where your space was. Welcome to this year's Halloween special. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying it. The audio is a bit rough. That's because we've been trying out recording with Zencaster. So uh, please forgive us for those couple of episodes while we figure out the kinks. Although the next couple of episodes will actually be like six months down the line. Because even though we've been on release hiatus, we've been hard at work recording a lot of stuff that I'm very excited to share with you. But before we can start sharing all the new stuff we've made for you, uh, we got to go over a couple of links. So first off, I want to, just like every year, thank Aaron Catano Saez for doing an amazing job voicing Victor Damon. Aaron is a phenomenal voice actor who does a lot of stuff in both the voice acting and tabletop role playing spheres. So you can check out his stuff at Aaron saezcom or in the description below. Down there, you'll also find a link to the Patreon version of this episode where I have written out the rules for It's Your Birthday, But It's My Party, the game we use during this session. The players really enjoyed using it, so uh, I actually am probably going to make a more fleshed out version, still only like a page or two long, and release that on like itch for like two bucks someday. But if you want to try using the rules that we've made now, you can check our description for that. Down there, you're also going to find games for Gaza. Uh, If you've been on social media or following the news at all recently, you'll know about the horrible, frankly, genocide that's happening in Gaza right now. And even though it is across the world, uh, there's a lot we can do to help. So in addition to doing small but effective things like calling your representatives and telling them to demand a ceasefire, you can buy 256 games for only $10, and that money will be going to the Medical Aid for Palestinians organization. So if you're interested in that, you can go to itch.io slash 2120 slash games for Gaza, or if you don't want to remember all that, just click the description below. Unfortunately, I didn't know about this until they started it, and you can't add games in post, so... Uh, While none of my games are on the Games for Gaza bundle, any profits that I make on any of my games while the bundle is going on will go to the same organization. Finally, I want to talk to you about Looters. Looters is an action-packed, love-fest adventure podcast improvised each week by five actors. Audiences come for the sci-fi western excitement and stay for the hilarious antics and awesome community. They spin original stories out of the Stars Without Numbers tabletop gaming system, so if you want another game that uses something just a little bit different than Dungeons & Dragons, this is a kind of show to check out. They were kind enough to send me a promo for their Halloween special, so I'm going to be sharing that right now. This Halloween, 
the looters are facing their fears. Now I have that fear. Now Dude, I'm, like, I, I'm realizing I'm yeah. scared of everything. I live in a constant state of anxieties. With Deanna Nuval. Mm, spiders. Melinda Macklin. I feel like I say I'm fine with heights until I actually am up high. And special guests. Tina Wong Lu. Wait, I'm scared of a head-on collision. And Madeline Hours. Episiotomies. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but these final girls are dead set on getting out alive. Never separate from the group. Don't go upstairs. No camping. <laughs> Don't be a person of color. And I'm just kidding. I can't avoid that. Join us on October 24th and the 31st for the final final girls. A horrifying two-part special with Game Master Andrew Gauntlet. Uh... Lock your doors, check your back seats, and tune in to the Looters Feed wherever you get your podcasts. If that sounded interesting to you, you can check out Looters at looterspodcast.com or just type in Looters to whatever podcatcher you're listening to this on. All right, that is all I've got. As I said, we are back and we're ready to get started on the next arc. Specifically, in two weeks, on Monday, November 13th, we will be releasing a recap of Hereafter So Far, and then the week after that, on November 20th, we will be releasing our first new mainline episode in six months, The Siren in the Dead City. I'll see you then. We're back at the top. You can keep describing things out of character. I am no longer going to describe the way you're moved around because it's just, it's the same each time. We're skidding. But yeah, it is turn two. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe in first place is Hilda with 15 star points. Mm-hmm. Second place is Irene and Kike with 10 star points. Yay. And finally is Sparky with five star points. I have five star points. Sparky, I need you to roll me a 1d10. And you can use an item if you like. I don't want to go anywhere that these people are. <laughs> so no. You don't want to be where the people are. I don't want to be where the people are. Eight. All right. You rolled eight. You land on a blue space. The yeah. pumpkin moves you forward and you feel the rejuvenating energy. Ten SB. Irene, you can use an item or you can just roll. Um, and items can be applied to you or someone else. Is that the only rule? That, and you can't use them uh, after you've already rolled, with the exception of the die recycler. Yeah. I would like to use my poison mushroom on Victor David. <laughs> <laughs> you did say that was the only rule. You grab a mushroom, <laughs> and it flies up into the sky. <laughs> it goes to the Epcot ball. <laughs> I love it. You never know what's going to get Hallie. Victor doesn't feel anything because he's a pre-recording. <laughs> but as it flies into the void, Ben just says, well, that's going to come back to bite us next year. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Irene used I I was back. I I a that. poison. What was Patness like sign from the Hunger Games? Oh, my gosh. Please. It's it's three. Uh, it's three. I recently watched the Hunger Games. So I can't tell you. <laughs> Why eat the poison berries when you, when you can shove the poison berries into the capital's mouth? <laughs> Poor Victor, he's just watching this from like home or like while on a walk. From the Epcot ball. <laughs> he's watching from the Epcot ball. That's his home now. And just like a blue shell out of nowhere, the poison mushroom just <laughs> comes into him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, it doesn't seem like anything changed for now, but rest assured it made its way to Victor Damon. A very cranky Irene will bat the dice. <laughs> I rolled a three. Okay, I think this is a new space. Ooh. You uh, land on a blue space, but it's red instead. So <laughs> a, red, a red space. So it's not a blue space. We call that a red space. Uh, <laughs> it's a diamond pyramid space. Oh, I hear some red space. That's going to be five star points, friend. And you can feel as the light is sucked out of you, Irene. You're out of the hole. 
But I'm going to say instead of going into the red space, it falls into the hole instead, which is just a, it's just hanging out with you now. <laughs> the hole is just hanging out with you. Wow. I love that. That's so fun. All right. Uh, Hilda, you get to use an item or roll. Um, mushroom dance. It's going to fling up my mushroom. You fling up a mushroom and it explodes in ghostly Halloween energy. And the inside we can realize is just is a pumpkin. It's a pumpkin that was changed into a mushroom shape. God uh, so Gord gets over everyone. It's a mushkin. That's a good thing. I rolled a one, but now it's a four with my mushroom. Nice. So I'm going to the happening space. You're going to the happening space. I rolled another one. <laughs> oh, this will be interesting. He just takes the remote that has Hilda's little icon on it. And it's like, oh, this will be interesting because you're controlling someone else and someone else is controlling you. And, uh, oh, you know, God damn it. And he hands uh, he hands the controller over to you, Emily. And on Tom's next turn, you get to decide what he does. I want to imagine the icon is just knock off Sonic. Yes, yes. knock off Sonic, but balloon. But hey, you still get to take care of uh, Aurelio Enrique's turn. Which is Hilda's turn, right? Because yeah. So in front of the little remote you have, Hilda, you can see a series of Kike's items appear in front of you, and you have two. I have the dice re-roller or whatever, and then I have the chomp call. We're going to use the chomp call. All right, you're going to use the chomp call. Roll me a 1d10. I roll it instead of Ari. Uh, actually, no. Yeah, let's make Ari roll. You'd get to make decisions, but Ari has to roll the consequences <laughs> of your actions. <laughs> Four. Four. So that's going to mean that on a four, you're going to get a star until someone lands on the star space. And then uh, on a 12, 12 is the new happening space. God damn it. Which doesn't seem that bad until you realize that there may, in fact, be a happening star. (laughs) Who knows? It's one of the options. And yeah, so that switches. And then I'm still going to have Ari roll. Yeah. But I want to say that as a dice block goes over Kiki's head, you can see a little dice block appears over the red button on your controller. And it says, hit me, hit me, but higher pitched. Three. Three. Almost four. That's so annoying. You are pulled wait, full. Wait. Oh, no, never mind. I can't use two items for the same turn. God damn it. Okay. You can't use two items, and you can't use items because Tom controls this turn. Only I can. Oh, yeah. Like, I would potentially consider it. Uh, I'm going to say, actually, yeah, Hilda, you see Kike starting to move his way towards the red space. You have the ability, if you want, to re-roll it for him. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Hilda's too pure. Kike, as you're about to move forward, you notice that you're just thrust back to the original space and you have to roll again. All right, let's see. Let's go. Seven. Seven. Kike, you go forward and you end up on a blue space and you get five star points. Yes. Hilda, how do you feel? I want to know how Hilda feels having made this willing sacrifice. Uh... Hilda's just happy it wasn't the star space. (laughs) It paid off. Everybody's happy now. It was a blue space instead of a red space. (laughs) Wolfism is a good thing. You've ended your turn, and Victor Damon's voice booms out again. I love sports. There is just nothing quite like friendly competition, am I right? So I've looked into your world for the best sport I could find. Baseball's pretty common across most worlds, but baseball? That's something special. And Ben explains as you get up. Because, you know, you guys, uh, you, you spell it B-A-S-S. This is like musical baseball, you know? Basketball. I am much less excited. Is this one yours, Hallie? So yeah, Hallie chose this one, and the way baseball games work in Mario Party is they are timing. They're all about response times. But I wasn't sure how to do that. So we're going to do a little call and response. Christ. Essentially, I'm going to clap a four-measure rhythm. Oh, no. No! (laughs) You're all going to clap back, and eventually I'm going to start calling you out. And if you fail, you're knocked out. Okay, this is going to be really hard for me because I can hear you clapping there. Yeah, yeah. Like a split second before I hear you on here. Bump, 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 bump,
boom, boom. Ready and go. And we're gonna go in the turn order, oh. which means we start with Sparky. And then to Irene. Then to Hilda. Close. Uh, Hilda, you can feel you almost fall off. Like, you almost get beamed in the head by a baseball. Give you that shit, Kyle. It's either yes or no. That's all that matters. Alright, uh... <laughs> Hilda gets beamed in the fucking head, then. Bye, Hilda! The balloon flies off. Alright, and then... <laughs> and now we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna just go in the same order. So I'm gonna just start clapping and you're gonna have to go in order. So we're gonna start with- Oh no. Gets fucking beamed by a baseball. You expect glasses kill me every time. You try to put down your glasses to get a better idea and just. Oh! I win the baseball games when they're in Mario Party. Kelly was talking. <laughs> was close enough actually you can't tell anymore this is so hard because i hear you clapping as you're clapping swinging, but he thinks he stops before a couple of baseballs have finished, and he gets poof, flies off into oblivion. I, I don't guess myself. Which <laughs> I love Tom's faces and everyone else. And every time someone gets just two claps, I'm like, no! How dare you? <laughs> so, the uh, order for that one, Emily, you get ten star points and an item. Ari, you get five star points and an item. An item! Hallie, you get five star points or an item. Oh, I choose star points. And then Hilda, you're too busy blowing yourself back up together <laughs> to get any star <laughs> points. <laughs> All right, at the end of the second turn, what is everyone's star point count? 15. 15. 15. 20. <clears throat> so three 15s and one 20? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All All right. Right. <laughs> And then Ari and uh, Emily, just roll me 1d10 for uh, items. Seven. Five. Uh, Kike gets a dueling glove. Challenge an opponent to a duel. Bet a number of star points of your choice. Oh, I don't want that. <laughs> I, have, I have a lot of star points. And then uh, you got a five, Emily? Yeah. You get a warp block. So you get to go to a space that a randomly chosen opponent recently been to. All right, you're all whisked back onto the board. You're getting the hang of this, right? Yeah. You really enjoy this, right? You're going to give Big Boss Man a good review of my work, right? Uh, was this part of the deal? I mean, it's not It's not required, but, I mean, it helped me out a lot. It's not about you, Ben. I mean, you wouldn't need a good review if you stood up for yourself to him. Yeah, Hilda's got a point. Why, what are you talking about? Why, why does the Big Boss Man have to say what you do or can't do? Well, I mean, I mean, he's the big boss man, you know? Yeah, but what's a boss? Why? What's a boss? <laughs> Only a 1d10. 10. Oh! I love that Hilda's just trying to get him to quit his job. Ben's thinking to himself, and he starts reflexively doing tap dancing while he thinks. 
and he tip taps away, like hand on chin, deep in <laughs> thought. You are freed of Ben. I'm going to just say indefinitely. You're just freed of him for a while. Oh, my God. If you want to bring him back, you can. But yeah, you uh, you are freed of the oversight of Ben. Ooh. So, yeah, you can do what you want. Or at the top of the turn, Hallie, you can roll. Or. I got a 10. Hallie. It's too late. Hallie, no. What? <laughs> what? You had an item that lets you go to a space someone was on. You had a one in four chance of getting or a one in three chance of getting the star space. Nobody's on the star space. I'm on the star space. What? I rolled a four last. That's space number four. Hilda rolled a four to end up on the happening space and then oh. replaced it with the star oh. space. Oh. So I wouldn't. So I would get to still buy that star if I was there. Uh, so you don't stars don't exist in this one for simplicity's sake. You just get 30 star points flat out. Oh, I see. I see how that works. OK, I want to use my warp block. OK, I don't want to roll my 10. I want to oh, use my warp block. Oh, mm, uh, mm, mm, too late. Mm, well, I didn't I didn't understand how that worked. I tried to warn you. Let's let's play this out because Ben isn't here to mitigate the rules. Ah! So the block goes down and the thing dice block says you have to go this distance. You picked it. And the pumpkin starts going around you to chomp you and carry you. Wow, Sparky, cheating already? Well, why can't I just, uh, uh, Kike cheated first. What? Because I won that one game. What did I do? With the Sparky Malarkey. You didn't say your full name, you cheater. Boss, no. I, I'm not sure Sparky Malarkey is a real name. Don't throw people under the bus, boss. Um, it's what I, it's what people call me and what I respond to. So you're gonna try to roll the dice block while in the pumpkin? Yeah. <laughs> give me a 1d10. I'm gonna give you 50-50 odds. Top half, yeah, you successfully hit it. Oh, that sucks. Four. You go to hit the dice block, but it just jumbles around and ends back up in your item pocket. Okay. And instead, you land on chance time. Chance time. Everyone's favorite. <laughs> no. Uh, so I need you to roll me uh, a 1d4. <laughs> One. So that's going to be you in the first base, and okay. then a 1d10. Nine. Takes all items from, and then uh, a 1d3. Okay, it isn't as bad as it could be. A one. Uh, that's going to be Irene. Oh. So both of you are thrown into the thing, and you start getting jumbled around. Again? <laughs> and Irene, you can feel the items flying out of your pocket and falling into Sparky. And what are your items? I have a ghost call and a warp block. Okay. Which I was going to use to try to switch places with Hilda before she got her turn. <laughs> Sparky gets both a warp block and a ghost call. <laughs> uh, no. While she's going around, she says, this is a bad dream. <laughs> and you're thrust back to your old space and Good game. the hole moves like a mouth is like, ah, tough breaks there, kiddo. Shut up. That happens to the best of us. That's how I got down here. Well, that's how I became down here because I'm the hole, you see. I'm <laughs> sentient. Irene leans away just a little bit. All right. Yeah, I want you to roll me 1d10. I rolled a six. That gets you on blue space. Blue space. Take five SP. And now it is Hilda's turn, and Irene, you see in front of uh, one of your many, many hands, a little remote, and you can see all of Hilda's items in front of you, which are... Just one item, and it's a custom dice block. Irene, please help. Hilda pleads, Irene, please help. And Irene, you see that you uh, either have the little random dice block, or you have a decision dice block where you could choose where Hilda goes either helping this poor child or further cementing that she gets in last place so that you definitely have a higher odds of uh, getting home in your body. I mean, if this weren't a dream, that is. Yeah, it's just a dream. Yeah, it's just a dream. So what does Irene do to Hilda in her dream? Hilda is just looking with like starry anime eyes, almost like, oh, what will Irene do? Big mouse eyes. Yes. So I'm having trouble picturing this. Yeah. Like, so, hmm. Custom dice block. Custom dice block. You can at least send me to a blue space if you don't want me to have the star. You know, kid, I, I, you know, I, I'm really getting along with you. Like, uh, I don't know if I'd want to leave and go, you know, bother some other kid, which is, with that custom dice block, something you definitely could make happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's tempting. Hilda. <laughs> yeah? What do you think I should do with you? 
you can help me get the star space. Well, that doesn't seem very good for me. You could send me to a blue space. It is my dream, so ultimately, (laughs) whatever I do and whatever you do is under my control, whether or not I control it (laughs) in this game, because it is already being controlled in my dream, in my head, so nothing we do matters, right? I don't think you actually believe that, because you gave the poison mushroom to Victor Damon. Well, I am angry at him. Good. We're fighting together here against a real common enemy, but it's up to you. I accept your choice, no matter what it is, even if I have to get in the pit. If I send you to get an item, will you make a truce with me to use that item for mutual benefit? Yes. Okay. I would like it to roll a five for an item space. Okay. You press the five, boop it, and Hilda gets whisked off to the item space. You seem low on items. Locally, you're on the item space. If by chance you had a lot of items when you landed on this, Ben will play the other recording. <laughs> we did record two messages for this space, right? And uh, Tom, I need you to roll me a 1d10 for an item. I got a six. I got a second custom dice block. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then finally, Kike, you were just sitting there staring in agony as they tried to figure this out, but it is now your turn. Kike's still not fully sure of what is going on, but he's just going along with the flow. I got an eight. You got an eight. Oh, not a blue space. You land in a blue space, you gain five SP, and all of you are whisked off to this little dance arena. You can see the floor is looks like it's supposed to light up and then there's a single uh, just iPhone oh my God. on a stand pointing at you. And uh, Victor explains, Did I ever tell you how I gained dominion over the Damon Saloon? I found myself there one year, a wayward soul with nowhere to turn. I tried all sorts of words, but none gave me the insight into the soul that I needed. Then, one day, a traveling adventurer came by. A bard, I believe they're called. This dear bard told me that when words fall, dance rises in dance, dance, demon Lucian. Each <laughs> of you will express yourself through the magic of dance. Bonus points for TikTok ability. I've been trying to trend, but I can't quite figure it out. The dance lights start moving, but you can see they're not fully on yet. And there's a little like stand in the corner with a uh, with a magic boom box that Ben presumably was supposed to play. But it's just not playing. But he's not here. Love it. So what do you all do? Uh... Can we escape the boundaries of the space? Like, what happens if we walk out of the play area? Hilda, you look around and you don't see any doors around you, uh, except for one that's about goblin size that says employees only. But it's like one of those doors within a door. So there's the employees only door. And then right above that, there's the victor only door. I'm going to squeak, 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 squeak over to the victor only door and try to open that part. Okay. Give me a roll. Six. Yeah, it opens up. You go to press it, and it uh, actually you touch it, and it whooshes away. And the space all around you whooshes away, except for the phone. The phone, it, all of it was a mirage, but the phone was 100% genuine. <laughs> and you see that you are in a forest with mist that sings songs of ooh, whisking all around it. The trees don't have faces, but they seem to loom over you and they seem to try to stare in you. Whatever expression you have or emotion you have looking at it is what the tree has back. All the trees around Irene look crabby. (laughs) I don't know why I bothered trying to make a truce with you, Hilda. I'm controlling you anyway. It is my dream. Maybe you controlled me to make a truce. Yes. (laughs) And then you can see in the distance, the backside of basically very cheaply put together made set 
of the giant like Epcot globe and where the entire game was. You're seeing the backside of that and there's, you know, it's just nothing. It's just propped up because you're not supposed to see this side. Can I follow Hilda or can I not because it's not my turn? Well, Ben would say you can't. Well, Ben is a chump, so. The board is in the distance. Trees are around you. You do all have your items, but the things that were whisking you across the board are not here because they're on the board. Mm -hmm. Um, mm, I don't suppose there's a way that I could use the warp block, but it would just take me where Victor Damon was. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, he did get poison mushroom, which in theory yeah. means he has a space. Yeah, you've set a precedent now. Can we use the custom dice block to like <laughs> however many however many spaces it is to Damon? That's how many spaces we put it to. You look at the dice block and you go to move it and see if you can move it more spaces and you realize it has an infinite number of spaces. Oh my God. Oh no. The warp block is pulsing with a weirder energy. You are outside the boundaries of a minigame and outside the boundaries of a board. Let's do it. I'm going to slide a dice block to infinite. (laughs) Infinite dice block. Slide that six-sided die to infinite. And hold it out for everyone to, like, put a hand on. Everyone's going to put a hand on it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like your thinking, Hilda. That's my girl. It's known that in the world of hereafter, you start in the realm of the living, the here, and then you go to the hereafter, Mm -hmm. and then you go to the afterworlds, which Mm -hmm. are all the layers of existence beyond that. There's always been a big question with the afterworlds, which is where's the bottom? People are forbidden from going there because it's so weird and strange. So like, is there a bottom? Where's the bottom? Or do you live infinite lives? You don't know the answer to that question because you're not in the world of hereafter. Dang it. But you get an idea of what infinite lives would feel like. Oh, God. (laughs) As you speed from world to world, having in the blink of an eye entire lifetimes appear and get erased. As you move, your form changing, your perspective, your opinions. You feel the weight of all of humanity across all of existence. And then it's brushed off across weird cosmic waves. And for a second, the world disappears in a moment of like shudder as you see a little boy in his bedroom with like little crayons on the side, kind of snort and almost wake up for a second before returning to sleep where everything returns. And after all of these moments where you feel deeper and closer together than you've ever been, yet more apart, every permutation of all of your relationships, each of you wakes up and notices that the TV or whatever equivalent is there is playing in your room. Are we human again? You go to feel... What's the first part of your body you feel, Hilda? Face. Yeah, you feel your face and yeah, it's your face. You're in your room. You can hear your mom's outside. It's pretty early in the morning, but you know, the other girl is going to be coming soon. So they're rushing around and helping get things ready in, uh, in the guest room. And yeah, what's the closest to a TV that Hilda would have in her room? Digital alarm clock. (laughs) You see an image on your digital alarm clock. Everyone else, where do you wake up? What is your equivalent of a TV? Like Kike would have a TV, but it would be one of those old TVs that has like the knobs that turn around and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think he's pretty unfazed. Like, I feel like this containing multitudes, it's kind of like a regular Tuesday for Kike, even if this <laughs> was. Like, this is just a regular Tuesday for him. So okay, it's like, okay, oh okay. man, what? <laughs> Perfect. And you do your relief for a second. You think you see your reflection. The reflection of you is Toucan. <laughs> but then you hear the hammering and the blah! And you realize, no, that's just Toucan outside the window. That's just Toucan. Uh, I'll, I'll go and give him an extra meal as I now understand. I have, I have gotten... You understand the <laughs> hunger? The unav- unending cravings <laughs> of the Toucan. All right. What about you, Sparky and Irene? Um, Ari, I regret to inform you that Sparky and Kike have the exact same television, unbeknownst to each other. No. <laughs> just, just an ancient... You know, just Kike's probably works better than Sparky's because Sparky's probably, is yeah. very staticky and old. Yeah, he's kept in good condition, despite it oh. being really old. Sparky's is not. It's got the knobs. Um, <laughs> Sparky probably wakes up halfway on the floor, you know, 
as you do when you've had a rough night. Um, she probably rolls over, eyes the TV, and then she throws a shoe at it to turn it off and goes back to bed. <laughs> and yeah, you might do that because of what you see on the TV. But before that, Irene, you wake up. Irene has a sibling who would definitely get her a digital picture frame. So we see this on an alarm clock, two old TVs and a digital picture frame. You uh, see the globe on the TV, the giant sphere with the pyramids, and it almost seems to poke out of the monitor. And you see Victor, except this time, instead of being on the screen, he's walking in front of it, kind of looking lost and confused. You can't puzzle out what's on his face other than that he is as confused about where he is as you are about what he's thinking but almost seemingly without his attention, without him doing anything. The little baseball bat in its hands turns around and faces the screen. And you don't know if this is for joy for your teamwork or sorrow for Victor Damon. All you know is that you see this emotionless baseball bat with googly eyes cry. And that's the end of the session. Hilda's just going to look up at the ceiling and stare. <laughs> I am a baseball bat and not a guy. Anyone curious, I'm going to put this stuff in uh, after. Uh, the other mini game was Emily's. Emily did it last minute, though. So I was like, oh, I, I, I'm fine cutting that. But it was fishing for victors. You basically fished his team members. The final one would have been bumper balls. Victor just really likes bumper balls. As he should. It feels fitting that his favorite thing didn't get to be in this. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and the final stars were Emily was going to win two of them. One was the bad space, uh, red or Damon space. One was the mini game space and one was the happening star. <laughs> so I was so amused when you all switched around the happening, when Tom switched around the happening space. I didn't choose that. It just happened. Uh, Hallie, turn that game down a little bit more, please. All right. Can you say something so I can see your recording? I am recording. Okay, perfect. Uh, How's this? It's still peaking for some what? reason. I don't know. It could be that this peaks easily. I don't fucking know. I'm going to push my mic over here then. Yeah, we'll know in the edit. Wait, are you pushing it further away? Yeah. Put the volume down and keep the mic closer. You don't want the mic further the away. The volume's all the way down. You want the mic a fist away from your mouth because otherwise you get all echoey. It's all the way down. You said two fists. Well, it, it turns out it changed to a fist. Anyways. My fist is so small. This just sounds like the food pyramid all over again, Kyle. Like, oh, <laughs> now we're not supposed to eat grains because <laughs> the wheat industry lobbied the government to make it a big piece of the pyramid. So, okay, I, I just need... <laughs> no, I just need to know, to remember... So I ate everything up to... Redacted. Has happened, right? But like... Has this Redacted. Happened? No, the... Redacted does not happen okay i'm trying to assess what my relationship with sparky is <laughs> all right that's fair that's fair yeah. uh okay it's like it's like getting there but still not it's not quite as close as we have been but it's not it's not unfriendly which one is it which is it abe which is it abe any other questions for me i'm ben okay but like oh sorry i thought it was abe i i miss the name <laughs> <laughs> well i mean you were the only one who said abe I, I didn't. You were the only one who said it. I actually missed your whole name. I'm sorry. I wasn't fully paying attention. That's fine. Most people don't pay attention to uh, little old Ben. I'm distracted by being a mouse. But I mean, it helps me. It helps me when uh, when Hank goes through, he doesn't uh, flay me and it helped me when and like he a long stare goes across his eyes and he's like, uh, none of none of you have like door flinging powers, right? I could. What does that mean exactly, door flinging powers? I could probably eat one. Who knows? Like the power. Like the power to pick up a door and throw it, or the power to like. Yes, take but over like, and like, like somebody no, like, take a, me. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You all seem great. You'll be fine.
I, 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 I did lose, but I choose to believe that Kike could have had the answer and he refused to say what his <laughs> biggest fear was. Actually, I rolled doubles, but I couldn't figure out what to say. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>